How did mythology help you with my role of Alan? Um, what helped me with that is having, I've always had an appreciation for vampires, um, ever since I was a kid, because let's be honest, they get to look pretty, dress in nice clothes, and bite women's necks. What is not to like? <laughs> right? When, when it was Halloween and everyone was dressing up like mummies and Frankenstein, I'm like, you crazy. I'm gonna go bite the girl's necks. I'll see you later. I'm talking this ridiculous accent. You know, like, I'm, like what are you talking about? Um, so I've always liked vampires. Um, and so when Alucard comes about, it is my understanding of the trope of the vampire and how the vampire has worked as a, the meaning of the vampire over time. Understanding what um, Bram Stoker was doing in the original book, and even before that, uh, the Nosferatu, um, how he had been portrayed in Murnau's silent film, and, and how, he had, how the vampire had modified over time, so that I could look at Helsing and go, okay, what is Hirano san doing here? These are the parts of the vampire lore that he's sticking with, and these are the parts he's innovating on. Interesting, right? Good. Well, I sort of, I get what he's doing. This is sort of a Tarantino, you know, thing with guns. But more importantly, one of the aspects of the vampire is the vampire is always dealing with whatever is taboo sexuality at that moment. So when, when Bram Stoker was writing Dracula, he was inspired by the actor Edwin Booth. He probably had a crush on him, right? Which is why the first feeding in the original novel is homosexual. So you've got a couple of different things that for a Victorian audience are taboo. One, homosexuality. The second, that the, the vampire is coming from Eastern Europe, and there was a great fear among all these upstanding Protestants in England that there was all this bad um, po uh, poisoned blood from gypsies in the East that were gonna come and spoil good standing English stock, right? So there's something threatening about breeding with these Eastern Europeans. So you've got different aspects that are threatening. And so there's a titillation that comes from going beyond the boundaries of acceptable sexuality. Well, that's not really an issue anymore, right? I mean, hopefully homosexuality is not a problem. And hopefully we've gotten rid of racism. But, you know, hopefully. So you've got to find something else that pushes the boundaries. So when the first Helsing series came out, we did it back in 2001, the thing that was sort of a little bit beyond the boundaries was BDSM. Let's have slave-master relationships, and let's have all this sort of titillating, you know, like, now everybody's doing it, you know? Like, <laughs> we have Fifty Shades of Grey, and we, you know, and so it doesn't, it, the original Helsing doesn't quite push that boundaries now, what is it, you know, uh, uh, 17 years later, the way it did back in 2001. And so that's usually going to be the next thing, is, is, is what's, what's going to push that. That's how the, the, the vampire evolves over time. So I'm looking at that and going, okay, I see what, you know, and so what do we got to, well, we got to dial up the Nazi. Okay, let's dial up the Nazi. That's what we're going to do.